Hey, what's going on everybody? Jay's Two Cents here, and this is like GTX 980 Ti week. And trust me, we're gonna be doing a lot of different 980 Ti stuff. Kind of like we did with the 960, it's probably gonna drive you crazy, but you guys are demanding this type of coverage, so we're gonna do it anyway. We've already taken a look at the Titan X, and we've determined this is a fantastic graphics card that unfortunately two and a half months, three months after release has pretty much been obsoleted by the better bargain GTX 980 Ti with its six gigabytes of VRAM, 1000 uh, megahertz core clock that boosts up to 1075 and over 1200 in my case, and the fact that it's $650, $350 less than the Titan X. I mean, 2816 stream processors, everything, uh, stream processors, processes, whatever, stream processors, everything about this card has pretty much made it a fantastic bargain compared to the Titan anyway. It's still more expensive than most people be willing to pay for. But what that means, you can now have custom boards for this thing. The Titan, you're not allowed to have custom boards. NVIDIA controls that. But the GPU manufacturers can just go balls crazy with the 980 Ti. And today we're gonna to take a look at one of the first aftermarket custom cooling options, the GeForce GTX 980 Ti Hybrid from EVGA. So far I'm the first one to get my hands on this and, and we're gonna we're gonna play with it, if you know what I mean. The Octane Gaming Gear combo from Cooler Master features seven backlighting colors, turbo mode, a Vago 3050 optical sensor, along with four levels of DPI adjustment. Now you can pwn noobs without pwning your wallet. Click the link in the description to learn more. So last December, I've said this before, Gigabyte should have made a single 120 cooler option for their 980s instead of that three-way monstrosity thing. What they should have done was simply offer a single 980 120 millimeter radiator with much, much shorter tubing and let the buyer mount it in a standard 120 millimeter fan slot in their case, just like the 295X2. And look how successful that card is. EVGA was the first one to kind of answer that call. They, they still haven't told me whether or not it was that video that inspired them doing the hybrid card. I still think I had something to do with it and I'm just gonna assume that the check is in the mail. So at CES in January, EVGA unveiled the GTX 980 Hybrid, which was a custom 120 millimeter, all-in-one cooling unit, self-contained, no extra wires to install or anything, uh, 980, which was a huge success. People loved it, and it was just as successful as I said it would have been for Gigabyte if they had tried. Well, here we are now, six months later, and guess what? EVGA is still the only brand offering all-in-one cooling options for NVIDIA cards. Well, here we are taking a look at the GTX 980 Ti Hybrid. As you guys can see, it pretty much looks exactly like the 980 did. And I do kind of wish that they had maybe spruced up the shroud a little bit so that it stands aside or stands alone from the 980, but it still is an attractive cooler, it really is. The color of this thing kind of looks silver right now on camera as you look at it, but it really is more of a pewter. It has a slight, just like a hint of copper in there. In fact, I think I still have the little plastic covers on there. Yes, I do. Um, I don't really want to pull these off. I want to leave them like new. Ah, screw it. I'll pull it off anyway. That's the sound of a new GPU. But they're a little bit slightly copperish looking, hint of gold, whatever color you want to call that. They're not true silver. So that's one thing you're going to want to keep in mind. Um, the top here is that same color. So when this thing's installed and you're looking at it this way, this is not as true to silver as it looks. I did the best I could to capture it on camera. It's really gonna depend on your monitor settings as well on how that looks, but check it out, a backplate. I'm glad to see that we have finally, as a community, gotten EVGA to start putting backplates on the cards that definitely matter. In terms of IO, it's pretty standard still. Single DVI, dual link. Uh, you've got three display ports and a single HDMI 2.0, which is compatible for 4K playback. Two SLI fingers, because you can four-way SLI GTX 980 Ti's. I don't think you would four-way SLI this though, only because the radiator in installations would start to get a little bit weird, but you could do four-way on here technically. Uh, but it is a reference PCB. So that's the thing that's kind of curious about this card is since it's a reference PCB, there's same VRM design, same layout, same everything as sent over by Nvidia. What you're really gaining here is a little bit better overclocking because the fan is gonna be able to stay extremely slow considering the only thing the fan on here has to cool is the VRM and the chips. So the fan is gonna stay very slow, very low RPM, very low noise. Uh, and all of the core cooling is being done by a single 120 millimeter, I'm assuming Asetek. It looks a lot like an Asetek cooler. And their high pressure static optimal, or their high, 
and their high static pressure fab. That's hard to say and their high static pressure optimized fan on here. Now in terms of power, it's the same six pin and eight pin. And uh, I know enough about the specs of the thing. It's really not all that different than other 980 Ti's. Like I said, it's reference. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about performance. Now this thing did boost up for me. I gotta look at my cheat over here to 1328 megahertz all on its own. I pushed it to an additional 1484. Now in the comparisons that you guys are gonna see here, I was kind of conflicted. I didn't know if I wanted to leave this at the same 1400 megahertz that the reference clock or card that I used was when I compared it to the Titan because I figured it would give us pretty much the exact same results. So the Titan X that you're gonna see in these benchmarks were the same results of what I did with the 980 Ti benchmark at 1400. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're comparing the max overclock to this for $750 that this kit costs versus the Titan X is $1,000 at 1400 with reference cooler. So I know it's kind of a weird ideology, but that's just the way that we did it. And you guys are gonna see that cards like this are why the Titan X is pretty much old news. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll those benchmarks and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Transition. All right, well, as you guys saw, max temperatures on this thing, 50 degrees Celsius with a single 120. What's funny about that is the Titan X's and Skunk Works are actually getting about five degrees hotter than that in gaming. Well, because it's all shared heat in a single loop with parallel and 560 and overclocked and overvolted and blah, blah, blah. But we were able to achieve 1484 megahertz on this thing absolutely quiet. Now in terms of aesthetics, I really love, the, and I mentioned this on the 980, the standard 980. I really loved that they did a braided, a soft braided design over the tube here. I mean, this is just really sexy. Coconut Monkey, what do you think of that? I like it. He likes it a lot, therefore it gets the coconut's approval. Uh, but I mean, it, it almost looks like a, gosh, it almost looks like a brake line, really, like a, bra a black brake line. Um, but I still really, really love the fact that they incorporated this fan in the radiator to the graphics card itself. So that's why I say there's no extra cables or anything to install. You just plug this in and plug in power to the graphics card, just the same as you would any other GPU. The unfortunate thing is that when you control the fan via precision, it actually turns this fan up and down, which is unnecessary, and not this one. I was hoping you could maybe control this fan to get a little bit better cooling to the GPU, but then again, 50 degrees Celsius. I mean, you can't really complain about that. So once again, EVGA being the only brand, for NVIDIA anyway, to offer us an all-in-one cooler design for NVIDIA graphics cards, 980, 980 Ti. Uh, I don't know if they made one for the Titan X. They might have, they might not have. They also have the ACX 2.0 cooler available for the 980 Ti, and they've got more stuff coming for 980 Ti. Trust me, you guys aren't gonna wanna miss that. So tell me what you guys think about this. You guys really liked the design of the hybrid for the 980. I don't see why you guys wouldn't like it for the 980 Ti. I know some people are gonna bitch and moan and grumble about the $749 price tag. Here's the thing with that. The 980 Ti is an MSRP of 649. They basically added a custom all-in-one water cooler, custom tailor-made to this card for a hundred bucks. And that's about the price of any respectable all-in-one water cooling unit from a reputable brand like Corsair or Cooler Master, usually between 79 to 100 bucks. This thing performed very, very well. The only thing you have to keep in mind is just like all all-in-one water cooling units, there is a little bit of air in there. So there's a little bit of sloshing. 
There's, you're never gonna get all the air out of the system. So when you first turn it on, you might hear a bunch of bubbles just flowing through the system like crazy. Don't freak out, it's normal. They will, they will make their way up into the little reservoir and then they will no longer be a, a noise factor. But if you guys are looking for silent gaming, 980 Ti, and it's within your budget, this is definitely a card that you guys are gonna to wanna to take a look at. All right guys, so thanks for watching today's video of the GTX 980 Ti Hybrid from EVGA. Um, so we're gonna have a little help here with the channel now. I've technically hired Coconut Monkey now to help me as a self-employed, self-contracting, I'm not gonna even call him an intern because interns aren't paid. And Coconut Monkey's time is valuable. How, how do you like it so far? How's it pushing stop and start on the camera? You like I love it? it? You like it? I you like, like, it. like it a lot? So now we're gonna be doing some projects here pretty soon. What do you guys wanna see on the channel? If you guys remember, Coconut Monkey and I did this little commercial for uh, Tilt. That was actually one of the most fun videos I think to date I've ever recorded. I wanna do more fun stuff like that. So I'm asking you guys to give us some ideas on what you guys would like to see. So with that said, thanks for watching guys. Follow on Facebook and Twitter, at j 2 cents and at Coconut Monkey. Uh, M-N-K-Y. Why didn't you spell monkey all the way out? Was it taken? You were lazy. <laughs> I've apparently hired the wrong guy. All right, guys. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.